Well, hello and good evening. <laughs> you know, when you're clicking on buttons, all of a sudden it's like, oh, wait a minute, it's the wrong video going on. So we're starting a few minutes early, but you know, that's okay because we've got all kinds of cool stuff to talk about. And let's do this. And we've got a great show for you tonight. We'll go more into that in just a few minutes talking about what we're going to do this evening. So, you know, it's been such a, I mean, I love the weather right now. It's so spectacular that you have to now wear a jacket outside, which is really nice. I mean, it's just that beautiful time of being here in Arizona. So, oh, so happy that you all are here joining us. And so I know there are a lot of you <laughs> watching on. We've got people on Facebook. We've got Twitch. We've got YouTube on this lovely day of December 17th, which is not our last Thursday for happy hour. But don't forget next week, we're actually going to be doing it on Wednesday because of Christmas Eve. But we'll talk more about that in just a moment. I also do want to wish all who are celebrating out there a very happy Hanukkah. Now, you know, this show is only made possible because of all of you being out there, as well as we also have a sponsor right now with AARP, and they have a message in that if you're looking for ways to stay active, healthy, and informed without leaving home, AARP Arizona has lots of online offerings and virtual get-togethers. Find out all the ways you can click to connect with your community at AARP slash near you. And so you can find out all some of the fun stuff they're doing, not just local, but also they're doing also some really cool stuff nationally, which you can find out about on their website as well. So what can you expect out of tonight's show? Well, you know, we are definitely going to do some trivia. We've got two amazing folks going to be on talking about a little town not that far away from Phoenix that some of you might have been to. Then we also have a little bit of Arizona music history, as well as some show and tell from things that I just kind of pull off of my shelf. And then one of the things that's near and dear to my heart is Little Arizona, as we get a chance to talk about a small town in Arizona. I like to stay around like a under a thousand people. That's kind of my sweet spot. And so we've got a great town this evening we're going to talk about. And then, of course, it would not be a happy hour without a cocktail. And indeed, have we got a delicious, tasty cocktail for you this evening. So if this is your first time here, you might be wondering, who is that man on my screen? What's he doing there? Well, you know, my name is Marshall Shore. And so I moved to Arizona about a little over 20 years ago. Before that, I was working in the wilds of Brooklyn in a beautiful Carnegie building. And, you know, it was winter, it was snowing, and I had had enough of trying to dig myself out of all of that. And so decided it was time for a change. 
So I wound up actually trading that library for a little 1950 library in South Phoenix. And that was so much fun getting to know that community. And, oh, I just noticed my bolo because it's turquoise is picking up the green screen. <laughs> I was like, what's that showing up? <laughs> so, so in order to get here, we loaded everything we own into a big orange cube, a U-Haul. And, you know, they have their international world headquarters just down the street on Central, right here in Central Phoenix. And we promptly moved into a little 1956 ranch house. Now, when we first moved in, it was all kinds of beige. I'm happy to say now it is a much simpler two-tone of seafoam and cantaloupe. Now, pretty much the reason why we bought this little 1956 ranch is that's my kitchen. Looks just like it did back in 1956. All those electric appliances, all that buttercream yellow tile with the matching appliances. And I think one of the cool things is that if you take a look, the push buttons for my stovetop are inset in the wall and still work like a charm. I get to use it every day when I make coffee or tea to get my day going. Oops. Oh, and of course I've clicked on something and now something's going awry. So bear with me for a moment. So we've got a great show as we get a chance to talk about Superior, Arizona. And we're going to have a lot of fun. So, oh, and it looks like the whole. You know, I don't know quite what happened, but I think we lost everybody for a moment. But, you know, I think we are all back now. So not quite sure what happened there. Let me just go ahead and do one more thing. Since it looks like my slides went awry. So I do apologize for the technical difficulties, but, you know, Sometimes the internet does odd things all on its own. So just bear with me for a moment to get this back on track. And we'll be cooking with gas. And there we go. All right. So that's my kitchen. My house pretty much looks just like that. Now, when I first got here from Arizona, all I kept hearing about how there was no history here. But I knew that wasn't true because every time I would go for a bike ride, a walk, a drive, I would end up in some of the most amazing places, hearing amazing stories from some, from some really cool people. And so... About a decade ago, I actually kind of left libraries to pursue this whole connecting of people to place. And then there's that post-war boom that I think in a lot of ways made the Valley 
what we know and love today for Arizona, all those GIs that either were stationed here, trained here, or passed on their way to somewhere else, and they were moving here in huge numbers, and in some cases looking for a house just like mine. Now, I'm also known as the Hip Historian. Now, you might wonder, how does one get a name like the Hip Historian? Well, you know, every year, Arizona, on St. Pat and on St. Valentine's Day, we celebrate statehood on February 14th. And so, back in 2012, we did an amazing 100 years of statehood. And so, there were events across the state, but on Valentine's Day, February 14th of 2012, they did a really cool event at the Capitol. They had a stage and someone gave me 15 minutes to talk about anything I wanted to. And I chose to talk about an event that a lot of folks don't remember. It was called Mask of Yellow Moon. It ran from 20, 1926 to 1955. And I was able to find three dresses in a box. And so I was able to convince three beautiful friends to put those dresses on. And so we spent the time talking about really that moment in time that was the Mask of Yellow Moon and what it meant to Arizona. Because it was touted right there with Mardi Gras as one of those things that everybody in the country should go and see. Now with that, uh, I started doing a lot of different tours and lectures. Um, in this moment of COVID, that has come to a screeching halt. Well, almost. I mean, I'm no longer doing lectures. And so I was really missing interacting with folks and hearing their stories. Because a lot of times people give me my best information, my best stories. Um, and then normally I do a variety of bus tours, which obviously are not happening right now. But I do want to shout out that we've started every second Saturday. We are doing a walking tour of downtown Phoenix. Now, everybody's wearing a mask and it's limited to 10 people so we can all stay far apart from each other. Uh, my co-host Deb and I wear little microphones with speakers on our hips so that way everybody can hear us. If you'd like to reach out, you will see there's either a chat session on your right hand side. Feel free to give a shout out there. You can also join us on Facebook under Marshall Hip Historian, as well as Instagram or even good old fashioned email works. Now, I will ask if you're watching on Facebook, if you can do me a favor and click on that share button so that all your friends will get to hear about all the fun that we're having with Arizona history. Now, you know, it would not be a happy hour unless there was a cocktail. And so I'm happy to say that I've been working with um, PJ, one of the bartenders at the Valley Ho and some of the staff there, and they have been creating special cocktails every week. And so I'm happy to say, and as well as on theme. So since we're gonna be talking about Superior later on, they created called the Magma Margarita. And so, oh, there we go. And so there is my silent bartender. And so the Magma Margarita has silver tequila, orange curate, so two ounces of Herradura silver tequila, it's got a little bit of orange curacao, as well as some prickly pear, as well as a little bit of orange juice. And then a little sour mash. So we have that. And they are so good, they even give me, they know I like mezcal, so they give me a little bit of that just to kind of plop on top of there as well as it's a nice little kit. And you can get these either to drink there at the Valley Ho or even to go, and they will package it in a lovely little container just like they did for me. And so, and a little bit of Thai basil flour. And so there we have the Magma Margarita. So now let's go back here. All right. So cheers with my magma margarita. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, so tasty it is. Mm. 
So I do want to give a shout out to the staff there at the Valley Ho, who have always been so gracious. Now we also do a little bit of show and tell. And so tonight, it's kind of a twofer. It's like, well, we'll see. So some of you may, so I am by no means a Shriner, but I do have kind of a fixation on just kind of some of the accoutrements. And so this is my Elzebra Shriner's Fez. I mean, look at that tassel. What is not to love? And so when we talk about the Mask of Yellow Moon, it originally was held in the Shriner's Temple, which is over by the state capitol. And the Shriners then moved out and they now have a, a newer building. They have been around since the 1880s, which I think is really cool. And they're really based on fellowship and Masonic principles of brotherly love, truth, and relief. Now, one of the things they are known for is not just fezes or being in parades, but they're also known for the Shrine Circus, which would have happened this year. And so I even have my little circus fez that you could have gotten at the Shriner. And so they've been doing that as a fundraiser for Shriners Hospitals. And so... Thank you to the Shriners. Now, just so there's no confusion, as it was explained to me, all Shriners are Masons, but not all Masons are Shriners. So. And, you know, through the miracle of modern technology or vintage technology, as this picture may show, I want to bring on a guest. And so... Let's de -de 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 -de. Hey, Pete. How are you? Outstanding. How are you? I am great. So it looks like you're in your own bar. Yeah, I'm in my wine cellar right now. Um, the audio the audio is coming in is a little bit drowned it out on my end. Oh, no. I'm having a little bit trouble hearing you, but there's my wine cellar, my Johnny Walker in the back. And I'm uh, here with David Guzman. Dave Guzman is a member of the Historical Society. And uh, he also has a very rich history here in Superior, Arizona with the Guzman family. Ah, so I invited cool. him today because he's got a ton of photos. Uh, I would like to share them with you today. Cool. And we've got all kinds of cool stuff. I mean, we've got our <laughs> trivia. So it's going to be a really fun show. So do you want to, so before we launch into trivia, do you want to talk a little bit about yourself, a little bit about per, Superior? Um, as far as myself goes, I'm um, third generation Superior, right? Uh, last, the youngest one of a uh, family of 10. My dad was the uh, last, the milkman, door-to-door -door milkman. And we still wow. got a milk truck out here out in front. And, uh, I'm actually living in the home that I was born in and my grandfather started uh, building back in the uh, early 1900s. Got one son, Christopher, little girl, Evelyn is three years old. And uh, I work here at the Resolution Copper Mine. Ah, very good. So, all right. So let's start into our trivia. Now our tree is a little unique because it's more about not what you know coming into it. So what we'll do is you can, as we go through the trivia, you can score your answers either in the chat. I actually had someone who was using a Sharpie and their leg, whatever is convenient for you, you do that. And then what'll happen is once we're done, we'll take a little bit of an Arizona music break and then we'll launch into some of the stories of those answers. And we've got some great questions that Pete came up with. And then we'll have some more time to chat about all the cool stuff that's going on in Superior. So, all right, as we get ready for some trivia. All right, question one. 
What is superior's elevation? A, 4,228 feet. B, 3,809 feet. C, 4,122 feet. Or D, 2,888. Which one of those is the superior elevation? All right. And then question two. Who gave Superior its name? Was it George Loeb? Was it Boyce Thompson? C. Rose Mofford or D. Barry Goldwater? So one of those four people named Superior. Who was it? What was Superior called before? A. Silver King. B. Pinnell City. C. Silver Queen. Or D. Hastings. So what was Superior called before it became Superior? What female Western legend is buried in the Superior City limits? A, Big Nose Kate. B, Maddie Blaylock Earp. C, Annie Oakley or D, Pocahontas. So one of those female Western legends is buried in Superior. Which one of them is it? The legendary Apache Tear is what kind of stone? A, turquoise. B, obsidian. C, quartzite. Or D, granite. Which one of those is what the Apache tears are made of? Question six. We're over that halfway point. Superior's magma mine is the first place in the world to have A, underground electricity, B, underground cooling, C, underground distillery. Why, I thought that was Pete's basement. Or D, all of the above. So the magma mine was the first place in the world to have something. Which of those is it? Superior is home to the world's smallest what? A, museum. B, crime rate. C, jackalope. Or D, schoolhouse. So Superior is known for the world's smallest what? Alex Arnett holds the longest running position as A, a bartender, B, as mayor, C, as constable, or D, a janitor. So that question eight, Alex Arnett has the nation's longest running position. And which one of those what is that position? All right, into the home stretch with our question nine. Local saloon, the La Mina, once hosted what country music artist? A, Waylon Jennings, B, Marty Robbins, C, Billy Ray Cyrus, or D, Johnny Cash. Which one of those played the La Mina saloon? And our last question, Manuel Guzman Sr. was commissioned to hunt down and eradicate what? The jaguar, the mountain lion, the chupacabre, or D, renegade Indians. Which one of those was 
Manuel Guzman Sr. commissioned to eradicate. All right, so now while you're getting your answers ready, we'll be coming up to those soon. But first off, we're taking a little bit of a break so that we can talk about some Arizona music. And so tonight we are going to be talking about Miss Tanya Tucker. So she spent a lot of her early childhood right here in Arizona in Wilcox, where the only radio station in town, KHIL, played country music, as well as hosted concerts. And so Tanya, as a young child, was able to go hang out and see Ernest Tubbs, Mel Tillis perform, and other celebrities. At the age of eight, she told her father, I want to be a country singer. Her father tirelessly promoted her. They traveled all around the Southwest so she could play all kinds of venues, including places like the Arizona State Fair. And then in the early 70s, her big hit Delta Dawn hit the top 10. And she quickly became a household name on country radio. In fact, Tanya Tucker is rated at number 20 on country music television's 40 greatest women of country music. She was also able to make the leap from not just country Western, but to more mainstream as well as from childhood stardom to adulthood and still performing around. So we are so happy that we have Tanya Tucker. All right. So qu answers are coming up just ahead. But first, I need a sip of my cheers, my magma margarita. All right. Oh, and we just lost Pete. So Superior is at what elevation? It is at that 2,888 mark. So not too high up, but still high enough to be in the mountains and be surrounded by all kinds of mines. Give Pete a moment. You know, I'm wondering if Mercury is in retrograde. Is that why we're kind of getting this? As things are all just a little bit wonky this evening. Oh, and very good. He'll be here momentarily. All right. All right. It looks like Pete's having a bit of an issue trying to connect in. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at question two. Actually, I want Pete to go into this story because I think it's a little bit more interesting having what he knows. about that. So one of the reasons why, okay, so let's go back to Tanya Tucker briefly. So one of the reasons why I want to talk about her is, is because does anyone have a connection to her? Um, I hear she spends a lot of time here in Arizona and I would love to have her on as a guest. So that's kind of within the last few weeks, finding out that she has a, such a huge Arizona connection. So I really want to try and see if we can get her on to be on camera. Because I think that would be super cool to be a guest here. All right. Oh, and there we have Pete again. Hello and welcome back. Yeah, I apologize for that. It was a little bit of a 
audio issue and then just completely cut out. Log back in and it sounds much, much better. Okay, good. Yeah, I don't know what was going on, but it, it did that earlier for me. It just kind of cut out. And so I was like, uh-oh. So luckily everything kept going. Okay, so I quickly did just this. I'm sure I did not do it justice on talking about the elevation. So anything else you would add about that? Um, well, there was a fella that, that lived here in Superior for some time. He opened up a few restaurants, uh, the Piedra Roja and the Porter's Cafe. His name was Lynn Higley. And he came up with the phrase that we're above the fog, but below the snow. So 2888 is right about where we're at. So we're roughly about 10 degrees cooler than the valley. Ah, so it's a great place to go in the summer when temperatures are climbing a little here and you want to get some cooler weather. Yes, exactly. Very nice. And how far is Superior from, say, downtown Phoenix? Well, I clocked it from my doorstep in Superior all the way to Sky Harbor Airport is exactly one hour. Ah, see, it is oh so close. And we have no traffic lights here in Superior. Oh, my gosh, you're right. You know, I never even thought of that. But, yeah, as I remember driving around town, I'm like, oh, yeah, nothing. <laughs> so it's a great place to go for a day trip or you can even spend the night. Absolutely. So because there's all kinds of fun to have there. So, all right. So let's go on to question two. So who gave Superior its name? George Lobb. So Mr. Lobb. And so how did it get the name Superior? Um, well, it got a name from Superior from uh, a lot of the investors that came in that were roughly from Michigan, around that Michigan area. So George Lobb dubbed the uh, settlement uh, Superior. I had a uh, prime name. I won't give that away. Ah, okay. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh yeah, that's the question. We don't want to, what, what was it before? Because I think right. that's our next question. So what was it called before Superior? Right before Superior, it was Hastings. Uh, but prior to that, uh, the settlement was the Silver Queen, dubbed after the Silver King mine just uh, over the hill here. Ah, okay. So it's had two names before. Yes. Very cool. You'd be correct if you said both C and D. So see, there you go. So you kind of got to, it's like, as long as you didn't select A or B, you're good. Yeah, right. So. <laughs> All right. And what female Western legend is buried in Superior? Maddie Blaylock Earp. And who was Maddie Blaylock Earp? She was a common law wife of uh, the infamous Wyatt Earp from the Tombstone era. Ah. In um, Pinal City. And I, I like that picture you got there because that's, the, uh, that's a great pic. Um, she's buried right in there. And uh, that headstone there was actually replaced because someone stole the original so that was uh brought over oh i wondered what had happened because i couldn't find any old photos of an old headstone all i could find were the relatively new head the relatively new headstone yeah yeah she was a, a she was a resident of the silver king mine and ah. oh and my friend and haley says she should ride her bicycle all the way up to superior and i'm like of course <laughs> So, I didn't realize Maddie Earp was buried up there. She is, yes. In the Pinal Historic Cemetery. Very cool. Mm -hmm. All right. The legendary Apache tier is what kind of stone? That is obsidian, of course. Ah. Which is kind of like a, like, of almost like a, of like a volcanic glass type thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Exactly. I got a couple of Specimens here. Oh, well, here, let's, let's hear. Let's make it big so that way people can see those samples mm -hmm. as opposed to, wow. This is pre-polished. So some of them, they, they put them like a little tumbler and it polishes them up real nice and and um, put them up to the light and you can see a little bit of a, see right a little bit through them. Oh, very cool. You can find these at the Buckboard City Cafe. You can find them at the um, the Sunflower Market. They have a bunch of them in there. You know, last time I was there, I actually had lunch at, at the Sunflower Market. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, no, it was a great little place. Mm -hmm. Lots of fun. All right. 
question six. Superior's Magna Mine was the first place in the world to have underground cooling. Oh my gosh. So they had a huge air conditioner that just kind of cooled down the mine? Yeah, in fact, the uh, the actual um, cooler itself is up on the hill just north of Superior. You can still see it. It's on the historical registry as the first uh, underground cooling system in the world. By a fellow you revere, uh, Mr. Currier. Bill Indeed. Cassidy. Actually, I didn't mention him earlier because I knew his name would come up now. And I'm like, you know... <laughs> So, which I think is really cool that, I mean, not just houses and commercial, but now also mines. I had no idea he air conditioned a mine. Yeah. Yeah. First one here in Superior. Although this, the distillery might, you know, they might have had one. What a surprise. <laughs> they probably didn't talk about it. Probably not. <laughs> so, and then I see Susan says she has friends who used to go out and collect Apache tears out in Superior and then go home and polish them up. Yes, in fact, Dave Guzman's over here is his grandfather. There's there you go, Guzman. <laughs> his hey, grandfather, hey. he um, ran the uh, rock shop up there in that, uh, at the rock quarry for the Apache leaves. So they would charge about, about five, ten bucks. They get a bucket and a pick, a pick and shovel and have at it. And he gives them. Oh, that's true. And Dave uh, just mentioned too, he, he is the one who coined the uh, the uh, term uh, Apache Tear. Oh, wow. Made up, entire, made up the entire legend itself. Um, Albo Guzman. <laughs> <laughs> so can you just find the Apache Tears like, sit, like laying around in the dirt? In some areas you can, yeah. Some areas you, you can pretty much find them on the road still. It won't be very big. It'll be pretty small. The bigger ones, you, you'd have to do some digging. Ah, very cool. All right. And Superior is home to the world's smallest museum. Oh, my gosh. So tell me about the world's smallest museum. Well, as you're coming through the 60, uh, you'll see the new um, Circle K just to the south of the 60 there. And right next to it, um, to the east, there's the uh, Buckboard City Cafe. They have a restaurant and bar in there, as well as the world's smallest museum. It's pretty tiny. It's definitely small. <laughs> so what kind of things do they have in the museum? Uh, mostly some things that are like uh, locally related, some of the patchy tears, some of the mining equipment. Uh, there's some Beatles uh, memorabilia, some Elvis memorabilia. Okay. Three students kind of thing. Very, very small. But yeah, so, now I'm, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just because I can do this, I'm gonna kind of give Susan a little shout out. So she just mentioned that her grandfather owned the lumber yard in Superior. Uh, we had like three in town. Oh. There was the Superior Lumber Yard with the Salazars. There was the uh mercantile that the uh Smokey's Mercantile that the uh Deffen Balls owned. And then there was another one that was way back when, and I'm not entirely sure who owned that one. Okay. See, that's part of the fun of this. You never, who's going to show up and the stores. Oh, Superior, Superior Lumber Yard. Oh, cheers. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize you had a cocktail. You haven't been drinking your cocktail. So cheers. Yes, sir. Cheers to you. This is a margarita, a prickly pear margarita. Oh, nice. Hey, Dave just pulled this up. I don't know if you can see it real well, but there's a rock shop where that, oh, that's wow. Mike that's Mike Guzman Senior. That's his great grandpa. So that that he's the one who coined the phrase, the uh, coined the name, the pretty uh, patchy patchy tear. Wow. And then my friend Keeley asks, "Is will Superior become the next Bisbee in twenty years?" Twenty. <laughs> I'm, exactly. I'm thinking I'm hoping it's sooner than that because it's like, my gosh, I mean, people are looking for more and more things to do. Right. I mean, um, I love Bisbee. Bisbee is where my mom was born. I'm, I'm a big fan of the small towns, Cottonwood, Jerome and that sort of thing. So I think each one of them has their unique appeal and, uh, um, you know, attraction to it. So Superior is pretty much on the way. I mean, we'll get there shortly, sooner than later. See, and I like how she amended it to say 10 years. I'm like, I think that's more on track is 
kind of more that time frame. <laughs> Cause I mean, I mean, Superior is a happening little spot. There's all kinds of cool stuff going in. Indeed. In fact, our chamber of commerce met with uh, the Bisbee chamber of commerce to find out, you know, as the next mining town, how, how they were able to really, you know, be a robust little town after um, the bus there. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And yeah, they I do with the, kind of that, that sharing of knowledge. Yeah. And they do it with food events and plenty of bars. <laughs> <laughs> and Superior has a lot of events, which I have a feeling you're going to talk about some of the events. Absolutely. So, all right. So let's go to question eight. All right. So Alex Arnett holds the nation's longest running position as constable. Oh my gosh. And they're indeed America's oldest lawman. Yep. Oldest lawman. That's a cool uh, article you found there. Yeah. Yeah. I brought this one over to Dave. Dave Guzman brought this over. He's got the superior Sun, which is our local uh, newspaper. This is back in 66, uh, which featured um, Alex Arnett and, um, all his story there. Wow. Bad dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can only imagine being in a mining town. You'd have to be a little. I don't think I would make a good sheriff in a mining town or a constable. <laughs> all right. So local saloon, the La Mina. Once hosted what country music artist? That would be Marty Robbins. Oh my gosh, Marty Robbins. Yeah, um, before my time, of course. But <laughs> well, the Lamina is, a, is, I mean, it, it's unfortunately it's closed now, but it, I mean, that place is an amazing museum, bar, cantina type, um, just tons of memorabilia, tons of uh, museum, stuff that would really go in a museum. It's, um, it's unfortunate that they closed, but was definitely a happening place back then. And uh, Marty Robbins uh, played there back in the day. Now, were they closed just because of COVID or is it a little bit more permanent? No, it wasn't really the issue that mostly because, uh, you know, the, the, the owners there were just, you know, they're, they're getting up there in age. And okay. so is the building. building need a lot of renovations. Okay. Yeah, they bought it in 1968. Wow. So they've had it for quite some time. So, yeah, so they probably were getting a little tired of. Yeah, right. Damn. No. All right. And then our last question. Manuel Guzman Sr. was commissioned to hunt down and eradicate what? The Jaguar. Oh, my gosh. Check out this photo Dave Guzman brought in. That's him with the uh, wow. The Jaguar. Another bad dude. Indeed. <laughs> even even a domesticated one. Yeah. Aw. <laughs> I mean, super cute, but I don't think I would have one running around the house. No, no, no not right. I mean, I, I would be afraid of what would be happening. And so, so what else, what else is going on in Superior? I mean, I know there, I mean, it's like, I mean, it's like the Prickly Pear Festival, which you normally have, I'm assuming is not happening this year. No, it was, uh, typically it was in August. We had to cancel that. Our home tour was coming up here in January. And unfortunately, because the numbers were uncomfortably high, we had to postpone that as well. So typically so, we have our in January and our prickly pear in August and our mining competition in March and our art festival, I believe might be scheduled in April perhaps. Okay. That's kind of iffy. I mean, it's like, I don't, it's like, I don't know if things will be back to where we feel comfortable gathering together, but I mean, mm -hmm. Spira has almost always got a festival going on. So, and the fact that it's so close and guaranteed 10 degrees cooler. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, you know, and so last time I was there, they were still working on the renovation of the Magma Hotel. Yeah, that's all done. That's all completed. He's up and running. Um, the pharmacy, which is the, the building he acquired across the street, um, has done really well. He, he's 
temporarily closed that because of the numbers. You know, he's taking right. precautions. I'm sorry, did you say Barmacy? That's such a great <laughs> name for a bar. Oh my gosh. And I, I guess that name came because uh, prior to uh, um, it being the uh, the bar cantina, it was a few things, but it was originally a pharmacy. Ah, so just playing up on that history, and I mean, and also a lot a lot of medicine was kind of boozy. So that's why it made you feel so good. So he's just slinging more medicine. <laughs> right. So you know what I say to that? I say cheers to cheers. more medicine. Cheers to more medicine. So was that Dave's grandfather or great grandfather? Great grandfather. In fact, Dave's um, um, great, great, great grandmother is buried in that very same cemetery as uh, Maddie Earp. Oh, wow. Yeah, he goes way back further than my family does. Seven generations. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. It is. He's also a member of the Historical Society. Firefighter. What else you owe He owns his own welding company. <laughs> <laughs> there go. That's amazing. Seven generations in the same area. Indeed. Wow. So was his family involved in the mine or anything, or were they kind of more on the peripheral of, I mean, such as erratic heading jer jaguars and things like that? I'll let Dave answer that one here, Dave. There you go, Dave. Yeah. Oh, good. I was. I was. Like, I was like, "Why are we getting this interpretation of Dave from Pete?" It's like I. I kind of came in last minute, and Pete called me and said, "Hey, can you bring some pictures?" I said, "Yeah, I, I didn't quite know what I was getting myself into, but yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah Manuel Guzman, we call him the first. Um, he did work at the Silver King Mine, and his son." would end up purchase, purchasing it in 1962 uh, with his construction company. So, yeah, we do have a deep history with the Silver King. I actually still have bars of silver. I, if I, didn't, I should have brought one with me um, from when my, fa my, my grandfather owned the Silver King. Um, and then on the other side of the fence is... Uh, yeah, Alex Arnett, those photos, too, is also on my grandmother's side. That's her dad. So I connected to both. So Pete called me in a pinch to uh, bring some photos. But, yeah, this, the Silver King, these guys worked there. His son ended up working at Magma and uh, ended up quitting to open up his own business. And it was everything from a ready mix concrete company to – uh, pool table and jukebox business. Uh, he had a taxi cab business. He had started the Apache Tear Cave. So the town's got a really unique history of a lot of entrepreneurs and really laid the groundwork for uh, a lot of businesses and places in the valley, really. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot here. I mean, it's, uh, we could be here for a week. Talking about the stuff, I mean, it's pretty incredible. It's like not believable almost. I mean, but it, but we got the documentation and we're here. Cool. Well, I look forward to next time we can, I, we feel comfortable traveling and coming and spending some time with you and hanging out and just chatting. Yeah. I actually, um, like, like Pete, I own, uh, I own my great grandparents' home. So that's where I have a lot of the documentation okay. and history there. And, um, like you said, they, they go, it goes, uh, really far back here. And then Susan also asked, um, so Susan, if you send me your email, I will make sure that it gets to Dave. So the owner of the superior lumber yard, that connection, she wants to have contact to you. So it's like, I, I, I will facilitate that. So we'll make that happen through Pete. So that nice. way you can talk to Susan. And then um, Rob is talking about his great grandfather was Jose Ibera. Get out! Yeah, I, and his I, wife I've been... Dominguez Bain. What's Ibarra? Oh, Ibarra. Oh, 
Okay, we know. I got excited there for a second because uh, the, he's part of the Ibarra family. Yes. Uh, I got excited for a second because I thought he was part of the Iberry family. So Iberry. Oh, actually, actually, it is Iberry. I didn't know how to pronounce it. So it is Iberry. Yeah. So so Charles Iberry, back in the day, he owned a, a local uh, gas station uh, general store. And he was a good friend of my dad. And he was a uh, World War I veteran. And I remember as a kid going in there, and he was really old and deaf as can be. And um, he had this German Kaiser helmet in, in his office, which was really cool, which I got a big kick out of. But he was actually a bookkeeper for J.P. Morgan. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. And he so gave yeah, my dad some yeah, books so that said I Yeah, Jose actually owned um, the, the kilns that were used to make the lime that then built the smelter. Oh, wow. So back in 1924. So yeah, and so Rob says, "Oh, Uncle Charlie, yeah." Wow, that's amazing. I would love to. I would love to connect with him because he. I have some books that uh, that belong that he he gave to my dad that I have uh, that are amazing books. You can't find them anywhere. They were built. They were like in, uh, written in the uh, late 1800s, 1900s, early 1900s. Oh wow. So okay. So Susan, Rob, if you send me your email, if you send me an email to hello at hiphistorian.com. I will make sure those get to Pete because it sounds like there's some cool conversations that can be happening. Definitely. Very cool. See, that's part of the fun is you never know who's going to be on. Right on. And kind of the connections that are made. So well, that's wonderful. Also, I wanted to mention too, Dave is also doing some video um, history of his family and he's archiving that um, information there, which is, you know, he's dug up some gems with those conversations. We'd love to share one. Oh, of nice. Well, I mean, that's, it's like when you're talking about it, I mean, all the stuff that he has, all the stuff that Lamina has, it's like, it would be fun to go and just kind of peruse and take a look at that stuff. So. Totally. Yeah. So I definitely look forward to when we can all sit down and gather and share a prickly pear margarita together. Indeed. So, all right. So Rob said he just sent me an email. So Susan, if you do the same thing, then right when we're done doing this, I will connect you all together. Excellent. So very cool. All right. Do you have any parting words about Superior? Well, I, I, uh, well, first of all, before, 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 uh, before I get there, I wanted to thank you for having us on. And everything you do as far as keeping the history alive, appreciate everything you're doing. Um, I need more people like you that, you know, keep that spirit alive and that information going. But as far as Superior goes, I mean, you know, I love this town. We, we uh, it's, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to describe when you, know, you, when you grow up here, you know, you kind of have your connections. But there's so many people that moved in here that have this really good connection to. And uh, we're going places. We have a place that's available for anybody out there, any of your friends that wants to start a microbrewery or a you know nano brewery type. I just spoke to a woman who owns a building here, and she is um, wanting to sell the building, but she wants it to be some sort of microbrew, nano brew, which is pretty cool. And it's right, literally at the hub of uh, the uh, Main Street area. Oh wow! So, yeah, and we're you know we're, we're we're still a mining town, but we want don't want really want to be looked at or viewed as strictly a mining town. We want to be a destination and um, hopefully we'll get there. We're, well, see, we're also, that's really smart because I, I mean, as history has shown, it's like, you know, mining only sticks around for a period of time and then there's no more mining. And yep. so what happens? I mean, there are so many ghost towns around Arizona that were just mining towns. And when the mine closed up, all that went away. Absolutely. But I think Superior being so close is such a great location for a weekend trip or a week trip just to kind of go get away and to Absolutely. relax and hang out. And I mean, cause I mean, I mean, I remember last time going there and there was an art space. I want to say the guy's name was Boone. Yeah. Yeah. Boone, Boone. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's like, I mean, there's all kinds of fun things to do. Yeah. And superior, so yeah, we've got a new uh, wine tasting area, uh, uh, a venue. It's uh, the Bruzy Wine Vineyards. 
that started up here in Young. They opened up a little satellite tasting area here. So if we have a few more of those, along with some microbreweries, and we also got the, um, a Justin Evans, who owns some uh, uh, bar restaurants here in Phoenix and uh, Scottsdale. He's opening up a, a bar restaurant here in, on Main Street as well. So we're really, really excited about that. Wow, that's really great. Indeed. He's got a so. huge shelter, he's bringing barbecue and craft beer. Wow. He's really going to kick it up a notch. So we're looking forward to his. Uh, he's going to be starting, I think, in January, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. He's so at the uh, wandering tortoise and. The oh yeah, he owns a wandering tortoise and sleepy whale. Sleepy whale, yeah. Golden pineapple. So golden pineapple. So people that are familiar with those places know that yeah, you know, he's pretty much got the Midas touch when it comes to opening up a bar restaurant. Oh, very cool. So C. Keely, it might not even be 10 years before suddenly Superior is popping. <laughs> right. So you, yeah. might have to, you might have to amend that yet again and make it even sooner. Five years, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, well, Pete, I want to thank you and Dave so much for coming on and sharing your passion and your histories with Superior. Well, thank you for having us on. And I look forward to buying you that margarita. I look forward to that as well. And at, at Barmacy, I'm so looking forward to a visit to Barmacy. Yeah. My own snake oil. <laughs> so, and we'll all right. On, we'll take you on the four wheel drive tour as well. Oh, even better. Cool. Yep. All right. Well, I look forward to that and I will talk to you too soon. Um, I will also pass on the connections to some folks so that way more conversations and more history can be shared right on all right cheers Pete, to you sir you so much cheers in oh that's actually a, a little parting cheers so i'm a little in i have a borrow cam but this is the best i can do <laughs> <laughs> well but you know it's so funny because you gave me a tour of your basement i'm not about to give people a, a tour of my little home studio because it's kind of a shamble <laughs> but that's why I have a lovely green screen. So it hides all the, all the flaws. Nice. <laughs> so, all right, Pete and Dave, again, thank you two so much for coming on and chatting with us. Yeah, Merry, Christmas, great, Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year and have a great evening. And Dave, be safe for the holidays. Yeah. Indeed. All right. Have a good night, gentlemen. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Oh my gosh, that was so much fun. I love that even in the crowd, it was like finding it's like connections and everything else. So Susan, thank you so much. And Rob, thank you so much for just giving a shout out and saying, hey. So now I do want to make a little appeal. If you've been watching on Facebook and at first you weren't quite sure, what is this thing? Should I share it? Now I'm going to remind you, you can still share it. So that way all your friends will know the fun that we're having as we talk about Superior and all the cool stuff that's going on there. And even though, you know, 2020 has been a kind of a wonky year, um, Superior will be a great place to go visit. And there's some really cool bars getting ready to open. And I look forward to going to Barmacy and just hanging out. In fact, I may have to get a room just because I'll be having a little too much fun. So we're about to go into one of my favorite segments as well, but it is sponsored by First Families of Arizona. Um, you can find them on Facebook under First Families of Arizona or under their acronym, um, TFFOA.org. And Susan, indeed, these are all archived. You can find them on Facebook through Marshall Hip Historian, as well as on YouTube, you can find them. If you do a search for this is... Arizona History Happy Hour number 35. If you do a search for that, it will pop up once we are done and people can watch it yet again or share it around. I love how it's kind of like, you know, we hit a certain viewership, but then it's great to see that continue to climb as word gets out about well, what's going on. People are like, hey, you got to watch this. And Mary, I agree. We need to do a little road trip to Superior and go visit Barmacy. So now we're coming up to Little Arizona. So, you know, I talk about how I was working in Brooklyn. Before I was in Brooklyn, I grew up in a little tiny town in the Midwest in Indiana called Odell of about 25 people. Two roads, one stop sign. 
And so I pretty much moved from that environment, pretty much New York City. And I have a special affinity, I think, for those small towns, those characters, that environment, and just kind of the history that's there. And so started doing Little Arizona. I'm actually in the process of working on putting together a book project with some folks that will be exploring little towns like this across Arizona. And so really looking at towns, 1,500 prefer under 1,000, but you know, there's a lot of little towns to talk about. In fact, we've been finding them each week to talk about as we get ready to go into even next year. And so we're going to talk about Duncan. Now you might wonder, well, where is Duncan? Well, you know, it's actually not far from, and actually let's make that a little larger so you can see it. So it's in Greenlee County, not far at all from the New Mexico border. It's kind of a, like 20 miles from Clifton on the way from Safford. So, you know, it was originally, it was on one side and with the mining coming in and the trains, they moved the settlement to the south bank of the river and renamed it Duncan after Duncan Smith, who actually was the director of the Arizona Copper Company. And so that's where we get that name from. And there's the town of Duncan. Now, it's a really cool little town. You can stop in here. And this also doubles as their visitor center. So if you stop into Country Chic, they have a little walking map tour. So you can walk around town and look at some of the historic buildings as you get to learn about them as well. Now, it's also not just a place you can walk around, but, you know, if you walk around a lot, you're bound to get hungry. And it's part of the salsa trail. And so there are home-cooked Mexican meals at these restaurants. And so Duncan is indeed home to at least one of those restaurants. And so you can kind of go experience that small-town country atmosphere in the middle of the... I mean, the state that has the fifth largest city in the country. You can still find these flashes of small town. And then there's a Simpson Motel, which originally opened its doors back in 1914. Later, it became the Simpson Motel. And really in the 40s was the heyday of the Simpson. It's like Duncan was booming as the railway was booming, agriculture. Lots of gold and silver mines scattered around the hills. And now you can go enjoy all those cotton fields, corn, chili fields, and cattle ranches. It's also a great place to go bird watching as well as fire agate hunting. So indeed. Oh, see, and Keeley's like, hey, you know, there's a great place in Duncan called the Simpson Mot Hotel. And indeed. So, yeah, so I look forward to getting a chance to go stay. I was just reading they actually, because of COVID, have shut their doors temporarily, but they will be opening again soon for us as we start traveling around to enjoy such a classic motel and maybe do some bird watching and maybe even a little bit of being a rock hound going out and enjoying some really amazing food as well. Now, I want to let you know coming up. So next week, we're actually on Wednesday because Thursday is Christmas Eve. And we're going to be doing holiday magic with my friend John, who is an amazing magician. And we're going to talk about all kinds of magic history right here in Arizona. We were just chatting the other day. And, you know, it was so funny. I knew a little bit of some of the history. But, oh, my gosh, it's going to be a fun show. And he's going to be doing some tricks in his new in-home studio. So that's going to be quite exciting. And then, you know, in this whole moment, lots of folks aren't going out and celebrating. And so for New Year's Eve, we're actually going to be celebrating live from the Arizona Heritage Center on Papago Park. And so we'll be doing a New Year's Eve spectacular. Same time frame. We're actually going to start before 7 o'clock doing a tour of the museum. And then 7 to 8, we'll have our standard happy hour. And we'll be celebrating on the hour, every hour, 
New Year's because it is midnight somewhere. So, you know, come celebrate with us. Maybe pop some champagne, have a cocktail, celebrate, and then go home and go to bed early and wake up and hello 2021. So again, this is only made possible because of all of you out there. I mean, I love that we were able to make some connections, which is really cool. So I look forward to hearing more about how those transpire as well. And so without all of you, this would not be happening. I'm happy to say I do have sponsorship with AARP Arizona. And their message is that if you're looking for ways to stay active, healthy, and informed without leaving home, AARP Arizona has lots of online offerings and virtual get-togethers. Find out all the ways you can click to connect with your community at aarp.org slash near you to find things near and far that can just help bring a little bit of joy and maybe a little bit of level-headedness. I know they've been doing some how to just handle stress things. They do a drum circle which I know is so much fun because you get and beat on things and get some of that stress out. So highly recommend that. As always, if you have any questions, stories, suggestions, or comments, please email them to me because again, that's where I get my best information. And also if you have ideas for how to reach Tanya Tucker, Oh my gosh, would love to know how to get in touch with her and have her talk maybe about the Wilcox history area of the radio station. The history in that area would be phenomenal, but I won't get my, well, I will get my hopes up, but so I'm going to be plugging away on that. But if any of you can help in that, I would surely appreciate that. You can also check out my website, hiphistorian.com to see other events like the walking tour we've got coming up on second Saturday, as well as Saturday, I will be at on grand Avenue with some t-shirts as well as our hip historian activity book, just in time for holiday giving. Also Festivus, if, which is now in its 11th year, is not happening this year in person. It's all virtual. And so you can track that down, hashtag Festivus 2020, to connect with all those vendors that you love seeing. And so enjoy that. I always want to give a shout out to Chris and Cole, who created that intro video. Um, Cole wrote the music, Chris did the video, and as always, the staff at the Hotel Valley Ho, as well as PJ, the bartender, and we have outro music, and it was so funny, the other day, I was watching it on YouTube, and it actually comes up and says, hey, if you want to buy this track or this CD, click here from Mr. Ho. So I love that even from the short clip that we play, they're able to connect you to Mr. Ho, who is a hometown boy, now living on the East Coast, doing all kinds of exotica. So everyone, happy Hanukkah. Safe holidays if we don't get to see you until next year. Um, Look forward to next year as well. We are planning on, in the throes of planning right now, 52 more episodes. So we'll be coming to you weekly bringing you lots of fun and amazing Arizona history. So everyone have a great rest of your night and I will see you next Wednesday. Good night, be well and stay safe and healthy.